bless you. You can be seated. Man, I'm excited about what God is doing in this church. I'm excited about the future. And, and I'll talk more about this later. But let me, let me tell you a little bit about, um, about what God kind of has done on this mission trip. Again, you'll hear more about this in the weeks to come. But uh, we were supposed to go to Guatemala to spend the week in the orphanage. We were, that, was, that was our mission trip that we signed up for. Uh, we, in the process of planning the trip to Guatemala, Josh, who's with Take Heart, who we took with us, calls me one day and he says, Pastor Jamie, I, I don't know if you'd be interested. He said, but there's this place called Roatan, and it's in Honduras, and he said, it may be somewhere where in the future you guys will be going. And as soon as he said it to me, I said, that's where we want to go. And he's like, well, I haven't even been. I don't know anything about the island. I just think it's a, it'd be a cool place to make some connections in the future. And uh, I said, no, 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 that's, that's where we want to go. And he's like, um, okay, well, let me, let me you know, figure out some information on it. Let me see what it looks like, what, you know, how it will go, and, and I'll get back in touch with it. So he calls me a few weeks later, and he gives me all the information, and I said, yes, that's, that's it. That's our mission trip. That's, that's what we want to be a part of. And um, through the last six months, as, as we've been planning to go on this trip, I've told countless people, multiple people, everybody that's asked me about it, I said, we'll be on this island for a long time. There is ministry that our church can do on this island. This island is, is going to have a representation of how many one church of God on it. We are going to make an impact on this island. And, and the first day we pull up, Scott and I were there with Josh, and Josh is like, you know, I really think you're going to like this trip, and, and you know, maybe maybe if, you know, come back again. And I was like, no, 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 we're going to be on this island for a long time. And Josh is like, well, no, no, just, just wait until later in the week, wait until the end of the week, you know, see what's going on. I was like, no, 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 you don't understand. This is... This is our island. God is, God is putting us in a place to where this is an island that we're going to impact. And, and Scott was there. He'll tell you. He tried to basically talk me out of it and say, well, let's just wait. Let's just wait. Let's just wait. The last day of the missions trip, we, were, uh, we, we had a free day. And so we went to the beach and went snorkeling and just hung out. And, and uh, it, it was great. And Maria actually was, had a picture taken in front of... The, the uh, uh, like, a, like a map or, or you know, and so anyway, she takes this picture in front of it, and she's, everybody's passing around their phones looking at each other's pictures, and somebody says to me, did you know they had a pound and a point in Roatan? And I was like, I didn't, but God did. And it's amazing that God knows where we're going before we go, and years and years and years and years and years earlier, he already named a little little cubby hole after us, a little city, a little town after us. So then I start inquiring of this Palmetto Point. And I start saying, hey, what's the deal with this Palmetto Point place? And things that we had talked about through the trip that we wanted to see on the Rotan were already at Palmetto Point waiting for us. And uh, and, and, and then I, I talked to one of the pastors there, and I'm like, tell me, tell me about this place. And she says, oh, you're never going to believe this, Pastor. We have a little in-home Bible study group that's meeting there now and they're they're trying to plan a church and they're 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 wanting to do a, a ministry there at Palmetto Point. And I said, well, I don't want to help them plan a church at Palmetto Point and Rose. Listen, I know missions are some of your things and I understand if you ever go on a missions trip it will be your thing. Missions wasn't my wife's thing, but she went and she is forever changed. Uh, I know missions probably isn't some of your thing, and some of you are saying, well, Pastor, well, you know, there's people out here that are hurting, and, and we, yeah, there are, you're exactly right. There are people all over the world that are hurting. There are people in your backyard that are hurting, that are in need, but there are also people that are in an island in Honduras that have no running water and no electricity and, and very little food to eat, and we can come along and give them hope, and, and, and that is the great part about missions to me. So you'll hear more about that in the future. I don't know what this looks like. I have no clue what the next step is, but I'm telling you, God has went before us years and years earlier to start setting a stage, to start to start doing some things differently. So I want to, those of you that pray, um, I want you to, hopefully everybody, 
I said that jokingly. Like, those of you that pray, and everybody's supposed to go, of course we all pray. Right? Those of you that pray, I want you to be praying for Common Point Rilaton in Honduras, that God would, God would circle that city for us, and that we could use that city as a hub to reach the rest of that island. It's a, it's a 33 mile wide, long, a mile long island and a four to five mile wide island that is full of 100,000 people. And they are, we have a little video to show you later, but they are, this is, it, it's, just, it's just heartbreaking. Okay, so, great, here we go. Read your bulletin, there are a lot of announcements in there. I was gonna do announcements, but I don't want to, so read your bulletin. There are a lot of announcements in there, a lot of good stuff going on. Go read it. Wednesday night starts my leadership class. If you want to be a part of it, contact me this week. I have a pretty big group already, so I'd love to have you be a part of it. Um, doesn't mean that you're signing up for anything. It just means that you want to kind of take your next step in leadership of the church and figure out where you fit in. Joshua, here we go. We just won the battle of Ai. We, we have, okay, so remember, we, we, we won Jericho, we marched around Jericho, the walls fell. We leave Jericho, we go into Ai, we send only a few men into Ai because we think we're going to stalk them. All of a sudden, those few men lose the battle, we come back, we say, God, what happened? We tear our clothes, we cry, God, please forgive us, and, and there's sin in the camp. Okay, so we get the sin out of the camp, we, we destroy those things, and then we go back into Ai, and we destroy Ai. We, we win the battle of Ai. Now what? What's, what's next? We won Jericho. We, we won AI. What's, what's next, God? What's, what's this really cool plan that Joshua is about to put into place for his people? What's this really cool moment here? Okay, so we win AI. We, you know, we hold up our staffs. We all yell and scream and woo, you know bump chest and, you know, whatever men do back in those days. And, and we're all excited about the fact that we want AI. And so, so what, it would have been really easy at this moment for Joshua to sit down and say, okay, now let's, let's go attack another city. Come on, guys, everybody, we, we, we've just won Jericho, we've just won AI, now let's, let's go attack another city. Who's next on the map? Let's check off another one, you know? It would have been really easy for him to say, okay, hey, let's get a group of spies to go spy out that community over there and find out how we can how we can overtake them. It would have been really easy for in that moment to sit down and write stories out and then send those stories to the other 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 areas so that they were even more terrified of the children of Israel. It would have been really easy in this moment to have a really big party, right? Hey, let's eat, drink, and be merry. It's going to be great. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all celebrate. Let's all party down. Let's get our boogie on, you know. And, and it would have been really easy in this moment to have a big celebration, right? So what does Joshua do? Joshua, here it is, Joshua 8.30. So they win the battle, and Joshua builds an altar to the Lord. Joshua built an altar to the Lord God of Israel, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the children of Israel. It was written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones over which no man has welded an iron sword. And they offered on it burnt offerings to the Lord, and sacrificed peace offerings. And there, in the presence of the children of Israel, he wrote on the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he had written. All of Israel stood around, all the elders, all the officers, all the judges, they all stood there by the Ark of the Covenant. 34, and afterwards he read all the words of the Lord, the blessings and the curses, according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses had commanded which Joshua did not read before all of the assembly of Israel, with the women, with the little ones, with the strangers who were living among them. We win the battle of Ai. We destroy Jericho. We win the battle of Ai. Let's celebrate. Let's keep our momentum moving forward. Let's go. Let's attack another city. No. Let's build an altar to the Lord and let's make a sacrifice to him. Joshua understood where his help came from. 
How often do we take for granted the victories in our life and overlook who is truly helping us? Listen to me, please. We, 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 we mistake ourselves as some sort of, of, of ability within us to overcome. And we mistake that, that we're the reason that we have food on our table. And we, we mistake the fact that we're the reason that we have breath in our lungs. And, and, and we forget that it's truly Him who blessed us with our ability. Every victory that we have is because of His grace and His mercy on your life. When you woke up this morning, you had victory over death. Right? Maybe some of you didn't. The majority of us woke up this morning. Some of you look cold and dead right now. You woke up this morning, you conquered death. You, those of you who have struggled with, with addictions, you didn't get drunk or you didn't get high yesterday, you have, you have had victory over your addiction yesterday. Amen. That's a celebration. That's a moment to rejoice. Hey, those of you that, 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 that still have a healthy marriage today, you didn't leave your, your wife, you didn't, you didn't commit adultery, you had victory in your marriage today. You didn't kill anybody today. Thank the Lord. You have Victory over your anger and victory over a, a spirit of murder. Don't do it. Our victory isn't because of our strength. Our victory is in Him and Him alone. And we get that messed up in our head. And because we mess it up in our head, we assume that it's because of our ability or because of our strength. The reality is you're here breathing because he allowed you another day on this earth. Right? Our victories are his victories. He has conquered death, hell, and the grave. The Bible says we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We are victorious through him and not through our own power. Whatever you think you're going to accomplish, you will never accomplish it within yourself. The Bible says, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. You must recognize that his strength is the one that will get you through the day and stop relying on your own power to overcome situations. Right? So we win this victory and we build this altar and, and then what do we do? We, we understand that the victory is because of him. So, so because of him, we offer him a sacrifice, right? You know what Joshua did? He offers a, a sacrifice to the Lord. We build an altar and we offer God this sacrifice. And, and our sacrifice in Romans 12 is, I beseech you, I beg you, I plead to you, please. Brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Give him your life. See, see, here's where we mix up, okay? We don't understand that our victories come through Him, so we don't want to give Him our life because we assume that when we give up a piece of our life that we are then no longer in control to have victory over that area of our life, right? So we start from the beginning. We're warped from the beginning. We have a, we have a, we have a warped sense of who we are and our strength and our authority from the very beginning, and because of that, Getting to this place where we truly give ourselves to Christ Jesus never happens. Our victory is in him. And because our victory is in him, then we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice because it's the only reasonable thing to do. Right? Hang in there. Okay. You awoke this morning or, or, or claim victory over, over death. So we give him our life as, as a sacrifice. Every victory in our life has to be appreciated. You know, I see some of you, 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 you know, you, you beat the high score on your coolest Facebook game, whatever it is, and you post it all over the place, you know. Just look at me, I'm now level 32 on this game. And everybody likes it. Good job. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. 
We beat death this morning, and we come in here and we say, hey, let's worship God because we beat death this morning. And people go, oh. <laughs> Warped, right? Right? We have a warped sense of who we are. We, we have a warped sense of putting ourselves in a place of honor, yeah. putting in our, ourselves in a place of, of authority. Joshua said, we won this battle not because of me, not because of my mind, not because of my strength, not because of my willingness to listen to God or to follow God. We won this battle because God is gracious and merciful and loves me and poured out his blessings upon me today. And that's the reason why we won this battle. So the only reasonable thing to do then is, is once I understand that, the only reasonable thing to do then is to give him a sacrifice of appreciation, of thanksgiving, of peace offering. Say, God, thank you for, for, for blessing us with this victory. That, that's our life. That's us. When we get to the place to where we understand that our victory is in him, when we get to the place to where we understand that it's not your strength, that it's not who you are or how great you are or how smart you are or how, how much money you have, those things don't matter. It's about him. When we get to the place that we understand that it's him that we win our victory through, then we're willing to say, okay, God, then I offer up myself as the sacrifice because it's the only thing that makes sense. That's really good. Y'all might not like it right now, but it's really good. We got in at 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't know. Maybe I'm tired. And 3 o'clock in the morning in our time was like 5 o'clock in the morning. There. I don't know. Anyways, it's, it's, I'm, who knows? But I feel like in my head, that's really good. <laughs> if you need to explain it to you after church, I don't know you have to. Your victory is going to be appreciated. So he builds us all or he makes a sacrifice to God. It's our life. Our life is the living sacrifice because it was the only thing that made sense to Joshua. The only thing that made sense was to give him a piece of who I am. God, I love you. I honor you. This is all because of you, so I give you me. He builds this altar. He makes a sacrifice. And then he does what? He reads the word of God to you. Every part of the law, which is essentially the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. He reads to them every part of it. I read 12 scriptures, and y'all are like, why are you reading so much in the Bible? Tell us a story. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you what I love the Bible. <laughs> so he builds an altar, he makes a sacrifice, and then he opens up God's word, and he begins to read. He begins to read to them. Now, now, why is this so vital after a victory, after two huge victories? Why is it so important to, 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 to just stop and to say, okay, let's, let's read God's word? He knew that if they ever got their eyes off of who God was, that their hearts would eventually turn to Listen, when we get our eyes off of who God really is, then our hearts will quickly follow our eyes. When you get your eyes off of Him, then your life will quickly turn back towards the world. It's just the way things work. It's our nature. It's our humanity. It's what our, human, our, our flesh wants to be a part of. How do we know who He is? Through His Word. How do we know him here, right here? First John 1 and 1 said, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made. In him was life. How do we know who God is through his Word? Open up your Bible. Joshua reminds them of who God is. 
Joshua opens up the word of God to remind them who God truly is. People will introduce me and they say really nice things about me, and that's great. And I'll go guest preach somewhere and they'll, you know, Pastor Jamie's coming and he's done some incredible things and man, he's awesome. And, you know, they try to be nice to you whenever they're introducing you so that people will listen to you. And, and sometimes I, I, I wish they would tell the really yucky things about me. Sometimes I wish they would tell that I get really frustrated when people run away. It drives me nuts. I don't understand, girls, why when you stop to go to the bathroom and everybody starts walking away, why then four girls go, wait, I gotta go to the bathroom. What do you think we were doing here? Go to the bathroom. I get frustrated with people who run late. I wish, I wish people would tell the yucky things about me. I wish people would tell that anytime I'm challenged to do something, even things I shouldn't do, I'd try to do them. I, I mean, we're, we're at our hotel, and there's a dock that is probably five miles away, at least five miles away, and a barracuda in the water that's this big. And Scott's like, hey, let's swim to the dock. <laughs> and then everybody jumps on board. Oh, you can't do it. <coughs> well, I'll show you. <laughs> now, halfway there, I thought, I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> you were right. Never swam in the ocean like that, but man, it's tough. It was the bigger could have bit Scott's toe and then <laughs> I wish people would tell the really yucky things about me. I, I wish people would tell that at times I get paralyzed with fear of the vision of the future that God has given me. There's times where I'm afraid to even share things. I shared one thing with my wife a few month, a month ago or two, whatever it was, and she just starts giggling at me. She says, you have such big dreams. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're right, you're right. I get paralyzed with fear to even share the vision that God has given to me because sometimes I just think, you know, God, I, I can't accomplish this. Joshua, as he's opening up God's word, he says, I want to read every part of who God is. The blessings and the curses. If you think that there aren't consequences for your sin. You are naive to who God is. Well, preacher, Jesus paid the price for sin, and I don't have to. Yes, he did. Absolutely. The Bible says you need to do what? To forgive those for sins. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And if you truly believe in your heart that he is the son of God and that he died for your sins, then you'll turn from your sin and you'll run to him, right? Yeah. He read every part of who God is. And let me just say this to a church body, a, a culture that gets their encouraging word of the day on their phone from their Bible app. I do it every day. You get your encouraging word and you think, man, that's great. That's so amazing. Thank you, Jesus. But you never read who God truly is. Let me just challenge you to open up his word and see him for who he truly, truly is. Amen? Amen. Amen. So Joshua read, wins these two huge battles. Sacrifices because he understands that it's all about God. Then he begins to read to them the word. And he tells everyone who God is, the blessings and the curses. And he tells the women... Now, this is not a knock against women, but think of it in context. The people who have no influence, essentially. The people in this culture that have no influence. The people who are perceived to be second class. The people who are perceived to be less than important, less than valuable. He read it to them. He read it to the little ones, not just children, the people who don't fully understand 
How many of your family, your friends, how many of you yourself have said to, to people, well, I just don't understand the Bible. That's why I can't read it. Foo. You know what fooey means? I don't believe it. Open up God's Word, prayerfully read it, and for some reason it will magically open itself up to you so that you will be able to understand he reads it to the women, the second-class citizens, the people who have no influence. He reads it to the little ones, the people who don't fully understand, the people who don't have a grasp of what he's doing. And then he read it to the strangers or the people who have never heard the word of God. Shouldn't we be telling everyone who God is? The reason Joshua read it to the people was so that they understood who God was. Isn't it our responsibility to tell the people, the ones who have no influence, the ones who don't fully understand, the ones that have never heard, isn't it our responsibility to share with them who Jesus Christ truly is? Guess what? You will never be able to explain who Jesus is unless you open up his word and find out who he is. Victory is through Him? Do we first need to get to the place to where we understand that your breath in your lungs this morning came from Him? Your ability to be a banker or your ability to be a chef or your ability to be a housekeeper or your ability to be a fill in the blank came from Him? If you think I could walk off of this pulpit and go be a motivational speaker, you're crazy. My ability comes from him and only through him. If you think that you if you think that you've been given ability in your life so that you can use it for personal gain without blessing his kingdom for you, you're crazy. Our ability comes through him, and when we get to the place to where we truly grasp that, then we're able to then give ourselves as a sacrifice. Then we're able to truly open up and see who he is and tell others who he truly is and allow them to see him inside of us. We have to get to a place to where we truly understand that our victory is in Christ Jesus, not ourselves. The scripture Miss Ruth read this morning, Zechariah 4 and 6, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the it is not through your strength. It is not through your ability. It is not through your mental capabilities. He doesn't know. It is only by his spirit that you are able to accomplish the things that you accomplish. Not by might, not by spirit, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Not through your abilities. There's some strong dudes in here. There's some, there's some, there's some big old men. There's some men in here that would take you out back and whoop you good. <laughs> there are quite a few of them here. I'm scared of them. It's okay to scare people. <laughs> but it's not through their power, through their might. There's some of you that have buying power, a lot of money. A lot of ability to buy people. It's not through your buying power. It's not through your buying strength. Some of you, you think you're emotionally strong. I can take anything. It's not through your mind. It's through your power. Through the Spirit of God living inside of you. That you're able to overcome. Or be victorious. All of this is a big ball, okay? 
We understand that our victory is in Him. We get to the place to where we understand it's not by my, my might or by my strength, but by your spirit, says the Lord. We get to the place to where we understand that. Then all of a sudden, the only reasonable thing to do, as Romans 12 says, is to give ourselves as a living sacrifice to Him. We make the sacrifice of us to Him. Listen. They're, they're going to sing this song. I, I want us to stand together, if you will. I'm not done preaching. I want to sing three songs during the service. You can do one more. I want them to sing. This is, this is a song, and it says, I'm no longer a slave. I'm, I'm not tied down to my past sins and my old self. We're, we're going to sing this song. We're going to worship a little bit. Then I'm going to come back and finish up. Then after that, we're going to show the video of for those of you that want to hang out. Scott's going to come up and talk a little bit. We're going to show the video of the amazing mission trip we, we just had. I want you right now, as they sing, to understand that you're victorious through Christ Jesus and not through anything that you have done or anything that you have achieved. And then understand that whatever it is that you're tied down to, Whatever it is in your life that you can't find a way to get out. How can I fix my marriage? How can I break these addictions? How can I get free from the sin? How can I overcome debt or pride or greed? How, how, I'm, I'm fighting these sicknesses or, or this bitterness or these emotional scars. How do I overcome these things? Understand today that you are no longer a slave to who you once were. But you are victorious in Christ 